What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo. Today, we're going to be discussing some news regarding the New York Giants offensive line, which has unfortunately been decimated by injury throughout the last few weeks. And this could be pretty troublesome for the Giants. They had to make a couple of moves today. They lost some players earlier in the offseason to injury. Uh, Matt Gono is one of them. He was forced to leave the team due to a medical reason. I think his career with football might even be over because of that medical reason. So a little bit of a loss in terms of offensive line depth there with Matt Gono. And now the Giants have some other injuries that have been suffered through the preseason, the first game, and some practices. And they're forced to make a couple of low-key moves to add up some depth. But man, let me tell you, this does have me a bit concerned. I think this could totally spell trouble for the Giants. But let's go ahead and dive into the latest news regarding the Giants offensive line. And let's discuss how they could maybe supplement a few of these losses. First of all, Shane Lemieux suffered a foot injury against the Patriots last Thursday. And Ben Bredesen also went down with a right arm issue, <clears throat> issue in yesterday's practice. So, Right there, you're losing your starting left guard for the time being, as well as your backup left guard slash backup center. And I know also John Feliciano has been dealing with an injury. He's not practicing this week. They said he should return next week. But again, there's your center, not starting center, not on the field. In fact, today's first team offensive line in practice was left tackle Andrew Thomas. And let me just say, thank God he is healthy and playing right now. Andrew Thomas really is kind of like the X factor of the Giants offense in many ways. He's a very reliable left tackle, which is something that the Giants haven't had in a very long time. And when you take a look at the rest of the offensive line, Andrew Thomas does stand out as a proven solid player after two good years in the NFL. <clears throat> and of course, we know that Andrew Thomas has had his fair share of injury issues in the past, dealing with an ankle injury in his rookie season that he had surgery on this past offseason. And now he's finally healthy. He did have a little tweak of the ankle a couple weeks ago, but it seems like he's totally fine. He never missed any practice time, really. Um, and he's been playing through preseason and training camp practices, and he seems totally healthy. So thank God for that. Left guard Hamilton. Um, I'm totally not even remembering who Hamilton is right now because I know that, of course, Shane Lemieux starting left guard injured, not participating in practice. Backup left guard rookie third round pick Joshua Izidu also not participating in practice because he is injured as well. At center, a new face, new name, Max Garcia. We thought that he could be competing for the starting left guard spot. Instead, he's been playing with second and third team left and right guard. Now he's called up to first team center. Not what you'd like to see. This is a guy, like I said, playing on the third team a few weeks ago. Now he's with the first team at the center position. That does kind of highlight how injuries are decimating this offensive line. But then, of course, moving over to right guard, Mark Lewinsky, and then right tackle, Evan Neal. I will say I'm really excited to watch that duo get onto the field in the regular season. I like Lewinsky. I think he's a solid, slightly above average offensive lineman. And that's really all the Giants could afford to sign this offseason. And I think considering the money, they got the most talent out of a contract like that that they possibly could have. And then, of course, we know Evan Neal. He has had his fair share of struggles throughout the training camp process, throughout the preseason process, but he is a rookie, a highly coveted rookie, seventh overall pick in this year's NFL draft out of Alabama. He's going to be the starting right tackle for the New York Giants, and it's good to know that he has been healthy throughout the offseason, and hopefully he remains that way because I think that he is crucial for the Giants' success. The offensive line we know has been terrible for years, but it's going to be super important for them to stay healthy and for the guys who aren't healthy right now to get healthy because good offensive line play could potentially lead to good Daniel Jones play could potentially lead to a good season, right? We haven't had good quarterback play because we haven't had good offensive line play. And that's been a major problem. Of course, it's a team sport. Those two things, they really do go hand in hand. But let's talk about the second team offensive line as well at today's practice. Now, this is interesting. Left tackle Roy Ambatica. So he... I thought was cut, but I guess he wasn't cut, but he has been playing with the third team, you know, second team, of course. He is not someone that you want to see in the starting lineup, but he is playing as the second team left tackle right now. I believe Matt Gono was playing as a second team left tackle for a little while and was supposed to be the starting swing tackle for the Giants, but he was not available or, you know, like I mentioned earlier, he left the team due to medical reasons. Left guard, this is where things get really interesting because the Giants have two players on the second team that just signed this morning. Left guard is Rivas. I don't even know his first name because I'm a little behind on that news, but let's go ahead and dive into him. I'll give you the scouting report. Um, he is 
a six foot six, 317 pound lineman, originally signed as an undrafted free agent rookie back on May 12th, playing 46 games with 23 starts over four seasons with Kansas State. He didn't allow a single sack over 362 pass blocking reps in 2021. So he does seem to be a pretty decently polished player, though we will see what he brings to the table in the NFL game. So that's Rivas for you. Um, this is Josh Rivas who was an undrafted free agent, like I mentioned. Now, the other player that the Giants have starting on the second team line that is brand new to the team is Chris Owens. Now, Chris Owens was an undrafted free agent rookie out of Alabama who was cut by the Steelers. Um, and he is a six foot three, 305 pound offensive lineman. He played at multiple spots for Alabama, started in 20 games last season, 12 at right tackle, even one at center. So very versatile guy can play inside and outside. And he has the type of experience on an NFL caliber collegiate team, of course, playing for Alabama premier team in the country. So his transition to the NFL shouldn't be too difficult. He does have the experience going up against top competition, but again, rookies, offensive linemen, growing pains. So he is on the second team right now. I'm not saying I, you guys should expect him to overtake Glowinski's spot, but he is playing right guard with the second team. Center Holden, which like I mentioned earlier, the backup center was usually Jamil Douglas, who's in injured right now. Then Bredesen, who's injured right now. Shane Lemieux played as the backup center for a little while. Now we've got Holden. And then at right tackle, Eric Smith. So um, it's very interesting to see here with so many different absence, absentees here on the Giants offensive line. It's kind of curious to think what they're going to have to do in order to prepare for the next preseason game and for the regular season, which is really just right around the corner. As you all know, next preseason game coming up this Sunday against the Bengals. After that, one week later, another preseason game, one week by, and then September 11th, regular season kickoff versus the Tennessee Titans. So it's going to be super interesting to see if the New York Giants offensive line is completely healthy by then. But right now, let me tell you, it's looking a little bit questionable that the Giants offensive line is going to be able to get healthy for the start of the regular season. Now, again, one of the things that I'll say here is that Center John Feliciano is definitely someone that I'm very concerned about because Feliciano was signed to be a center with the Giants, and he is a good player. We know what he brings to the table, consistent, maybe just average, but consistent and decent football, and that's what he brings to the table. But he is a veteran, and he's been dealing with a myriad of injuries. He was dealing with heat and hydration issues for like a week and a half, missed a bunch of practices there. Now he's dealing, I think, with some sort of muscular issue. So there's a lot going on with John Feliciano. I'm thinking it might just be time to save him for the regular season at this point. I don't even think he should get on the field during the preseason. Maybe just let him rest up for the next week, ease him back into practice over that bye week going into the regular season, and then have him starting by week one. If he's going to be ready for that, I don't even know. And then if we go ahead and we discuss Shane Lemieux, that's where things get even more interesting because I think Shane Lemieux is the, the number one player that I was really waiting to watch for this upcoming season. Now, once again, let me jump over here. Here's players that have already been ruled out for Sunday's preseason game. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six offensive linemen ruled out for Sunday's game. That's an entire unit. That's your third team right there. So you've got your first and second team, your third team, not even in existence right now. John Feliciano out on Sunday. Ben Bredesen out on Sunday. Joshua Izidu out on Sunday. Shane Lemieux out on Sunday. Jamil Douglas out on Sunday. Garrett McGinn out on Sunday. Now, Garrett McGinn is not somebody who I'm super familiar with, but I know that those first five guys, all interior offensive linemen. One thing that I'll say I'm grateful for, the exterior offensive linemen, the tackles, have been staying healthy so far. But seeing that left guard and center position just get ravaged by injuries has given me flashbacks to last season, and I am getting a little bit concerned. Why do the Giants have such bad injury luck, guys? Let me know down in the comment section below if, you, if there's some sort of curse or something that I'm missing here because it's really not making sense to me seeing left guards just get put into a revolving door and turned around week after week while playing for the New York Giants. It's bizarre to me. I just do not understand it. It is such unfortunate luck for the Giants and for all of these players. Again, Shane Lemieux trying to make a name for himself. First season, he got thrown into the fire, baptized by fire as a rookie fifth round pick. Started, I think, nine games that year, played in 12. Played way too much for a rookie fifth round pick who definitely wasn't ready to play that much. And granted, he did struggle a ton, but he was still the starter going into his second year this past season. 
tears his patellar tendon partially, tries to play through it. First game can only get through 12 snaps, and then he's out of the game and out for the season with reconstructive surgery. Year three, I'm like, you know what? Everything that I've heard about Shane Lemieux, he's been killing it, playing left guard at practice. He's been killing it, playing center. I'm excited to see him get out there on the preseason and see what he can do on that football field. And maybe this is the year that he has that breakout. Maybe that year off will actually do wonders for him as he rehabbed his injury. But how, once again, unfortunately, dealing with another lower body injury. This guy just can't seem to catch a break, and it's so unfortunate. I really want to see what do the Giants have in Shane Lemieux. Is this a player that can turn into something solid as a starter? I really want to know. I want to find out, but unfortunately, injuries just keep continuing to keep him off the field, and it's very, very unfortunate, like I mentioned. But Ben Bredesen, again, another player. The right arm injury, not so good there. This was solid. His solid backup that the Giants had last season, I'd like to, to see him continue to be solid backup, along with Jamil Douglas, another solid backup here. But when all of your solid backups are getting injured, you do have to start thinking maybe it's time to go out into free agency. I know the Giants signed two offensive linemen today. They had to because they didn't even have enough to have a second team for the preseason game. But yes, yeah, so the Giants are going to probably need to make additional moves on top of those two signings. Because like I said, six offensive linemen ruled out on Sunday. That is an entire third team. If you look at it that way, that is an entire offensive line in its own self, an entire unit. So very concerning stuff there for the New York Giants. Unfortunately, we might see more Andrew Thomas and more Evan Neal on the football field in the preseason, which is not something that I want to see. But with the Giants having so many injuries, they don't have a third team offensive line. The first and second team are going to receive more playing time. And unfortunately, that means we might end up putting some of our starters in harm's way. So I'm very concerned about this. Maybe the first team will only play a couple snaps and the second team is going to play the entire game. That could be really interesting. A great opportunity for some of these young guys on the second team to step up, show what they're made of, and earn a roster spot. But as I've really mentioned here, I am concerned about the workload for some of these offensive linemen now, filling in for other injured offensive linemen. And then, of course, just concerned generally with the overall state of the injury decimated New York Giants offensive line. I do think this could spell trouble for the Giants. I hope I'm wrong about that, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. It'll be super interesting, of course. Make sure to tune in on Sunday. We're going to be doing pregame and postgame recap, analysis, reaction, all that kind of stuff here. And we're going to continue to give you updates on the New York Giants and their injury decimated offensive line every single day right here on Fireside Giants. So make sure to subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss a video. Leave a like if you did enjoy this video and comment down below. What are your thoughts on all the injuries going on on the New York Giants offensive line? Let me know what the name of the curse is because I don't know what it is, but man, I need to find out. I'm desperate to find out. I need to find out how to break this curse so that the Giants can finally have a good and healthy offensive line. So like I said, leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on the topic? We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one and let's go Giants. Thank you.